The Star Wars franchise is such a colossal pop culture behemoth, spanning almost 50 years and a dozen theatrical films, that it's impossible for even the most dedicated and conscientious fan to keep track of everything. The wider universe has been explored through novels, video games, comic books and so on, some of which have since been confined to the non-canon legends ether, but much of what shines a crucial light on important facets of the overarching story is not covered in the films. And so, as a sequel to our prior article on the very subject, here are 10 more crucial Star Wars details which are almost never brought up among the fandom. Some of them are defining revelations teased out from the wider universe, while others are more subtle plot points slightly revealed within movies themselves. Either way, despite their clear importance in the grand scheme of the franchise, they remain unknown by the vast majority of the fanbase. But again, given the utter mind-bending immensity of Star Wars as lore, nobody could really be blamed for failing to take stock of these details, no matter their clear importance. I'm Sean Ferrick for What Culture Star Wars, and here are 10 more important Star Wars details that are almost never mentioned. Number 10. The last thing Obi-Wan sees is Luke and Leia reunited. Despite basically every Star Wars fan having incredibly vivid memories of Obi-Wan Kenobi's death in A New Hope, it isn't often mentioned that his sly smile at the end of his life has a very particular meaning. Just before he allows Darth Vader to slay him during their iconic lightsaber duel, he looks around and sees Luke and Leia making their escape, and then smiles. Now let's break this down. The last thing Obi-Wan sees before laying down his life is the two twins he separated at birth being reunited almost 20 years later. If that doesn't warm your cockles and leave you willing to sacrifice yourself for the greater good, then no. Think will. Even though some fans might point out that George Lucas didn't originally plan for Luke and Leia to be siblings during production of A New Hope, the meaning of Obi-Wan's look fits so damn perfectly that we let him take credit for it nonetheless. Number 9. Count Dooku erased Kamino from the Jedi Archives In Attack of the Clones, we learn that someone erased all record of Kamino, the ocean planet where the clone troopers were produced, from the Jedi Archives. And while fans expected either this movie or Revenge of the Sith to reveal the culprit's identity, neither film does. This was apparently due to George Lucas' decision to streamline the subplots and focus more on Anakin's descent to the dark side. And though the 2005 novel Star Wars Labyrinth of Evil did confirm Count Dooku to be the person responsible, this was rendered non-canon following Disney's acquisition of Lucasfilm. But the matter was finally put to rest and re-canonized in the 2022 animated series Star Wars Tales of the Jedi, where the fourth episode reveals, without any ambiguity whatsoever, that Dooku did indeed delete Kamino from the archives while posing as Jedi Master sifo -Dyas. Oh, and if that wasn't revelatory enough, the episode also ended by revealing that Dooku killed Yaddle, bastard. Number 8. Lightsabers are basically living things. While lightsabers are first and foremost awesome laser swords, there's also something that most fans don't really think about. They're basically alive. Lightsabers are of course powered by kyber crystals, and while in the original continuity they were simply a source of energy, the post-Disney canon reveals them to be living crystals due to their connection with the Force. In the 2017 comic Darth Vader, Emperor Palpatine straight up tells Darth Vader as much, saying the kybers are alive in their way. Like any living thing, they can feel pain. Furthermore, Palps goes on to explain that the Sith's distinct of red lightsabers are made by basically torturing kyber crystals with hateful negative feelings until they start to turn red in a process referred to as bleeding. Further still, the new canon asserts that kyber crystals have a collective consciousness bordering on sentience, making them capable of communicating with one another and general force users. Though these more recent revelations have certainly divided some quarters of the fanbase, unless you're a keen follower of all things Star Wars, there's a good chance you'd never even heard about it. Number 7. Luke was originally planning to join the Empire. Luke Skywalker may be the overarching hero of the Skywalker saga, and in every sense the true chosen one, but let's not gloss over the fact what Luke's original life plan actually was. Early on in A New Hope, he tells Owen and Beru that he's planning to submit an application to the Academy, as it is effectively implied that this is the Imperial Academy, as in the military training program run by the damn Empire. Basically, before Luke's entire existence got upended, he was going to join the Empire. Now, to be totally fair to Luke, it seems clear that he was only going to do the bare minimum level of service in order to get off Tatooine and go live his life further afield. But had things worked out a little differently? Who knows? Could Luke have ended up a card-carrying member of the Imperial military? Makes you think. Number 6. The Geonosians were wiped out after building the first Death Star. You might know that the Geonosians were forced to help build the original Death Star, but did you know what happened to them afterwards? Brace yourselves, because it gets a bit rough from here on out. In both Star Wars Rebels and the 2015 Darth Vader comic book series, we learn what became of the Geonosians. Once the Death Star was operational, Grand Moff Tarkin had the surface of Geonosis sterilized with a toxic insecticide, causing the deaths of almost all 100 billion inhabitants on the planet. Yes, that 
that was Billion. There was only one survivor, a male Geonosian by the name of Click Clack, who had custody of the last remaining Geonosian queen egg with the hope of using it to keep his species alive, except the resulting queen, Karina, ultimately turned out to be infertile, rendering the race functionally extinct. Despite this genocide being the biggest the Empire has ever carried out, it's pretty shocking how little it's discussed among the wider Star Wars fandom. Number 5. Leia did grieve for Alderaan. Fans often mention that Leia just doesn't seem quite devastated enough when she witnesses Grand Moff Tarkin use the Death Star to destroy her home planet of Alderaan, in turn killing roughly 2 billion people, including her adoptive parents. Yet this was ultimately explained away by a 2015 canon novel, A New Hope, The Princess, The Scoundrel and The Farm Boy, which offers up a retelling of A New Hope's story with a ton of additional detail. Among this, the novel features scenes which focus on Leia angrily grieving Alderaan's destruction in her cell, and that she ultimately decides to turn her grief into righteous courage to fight back against the Empire. Basically, if there was somehow any doubt, Leia is absolutely devastated by what happened to her homeland, but following all the political training she's received, she tries to keep up a brave front and transform her negative feelings into a force for positive rebellion. Number 4. The Jedi aren't celibate. It's often stated among the fandom that Jedi are required to be celibate, due to the restrictions on them marrying and having children, despite the fact that this has been confirmed by word of God himself, George Lucas, not to be the case. In a 2002 interview with CNN, Lucas was quizzed about precisely what the Jedi can and cannot do, and clarified that it was emotional attachment which they were forbidden from. Jedi Knights aren't celibate, the thing that is forbidden is attachments and possessive relationships. There's no requirement for the Jedi to be sexless monks, but simply that they avoid the aforementioned deep attachments for fear it could one day lure them to the dark side. And well, considering how things turned out for Anakin in the end, can you really blame them? But no, Jedi were totally allowed to get down without being pestered about it. Number 3. The prequels being more advanced than the originals actually make sense. Fans often complain about the Star Wars prequels looking more technologically advanced than the original trilogy. And while this is a common problem in prequels of any kind, Star Wars actually manages to get away with it better than most franchises. For starters, it's important to remember that the original trilogy focuses more on heroes who are part of a seat of the pants rebellion without the access to shiny newfangled tech. Comparatively, the prequels are set in far wealthier, more bureaucratic environments for the most part, with the Republic's emphasis on gloss and flashiness compared to the brutal functionality of the Rebellion's wares in the original. Given that Obi-Wan straight up refers to the Empire's rule in A New Hope as the Dark Times, it makes perfect sense that the accompanying aesthetic would be considerably more gritty and run down. The world of Star Wars is huge, and the originals and prequels respectively only cover minuscule pockets of it, so it's not really true that the prequels' tech is inconsistent with that of the originals. Number 2. Anakin was only 45 when he died. Even accepting that Anakin Skywalker has seen some sh to say the least, it's easy to forget just how young he actually is when he dies at the end of Return of the Jedi. Granted, a dying unmasked Anakin was portrayed by a near 80-year-old Sebastian Shaw in that film, but even in A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back, Darth Vader certainly carried himself with the heft of an older man, say in his 50s or 60s. But following the release of the prequels, where Anakin was played by Hayden Christensen and was confirmed to be 22 years of age when Luke and Leia were born, we know that he must be 45 years old during Return of the Jedi. Despite the blatant visual discrepancy, it isn't brought up much among fans, no matter that it makes Anakin's unmasking in Jedi that much sadder. This is a guy who has been through a lot to the extent that he looks almost double his actual age. Gnarly. Number 1. Yoda uses the Force to overcome old age. Finally, one question that's often brought up among more casual Star Wars fans is how precisely is Yoda able to perform balletic combat against the likes of Count Dooku when he's otherwise shown to be frail and even requires a cane to walk around? Despite the belief that some fans have that Yoda must be exaggerating his feebleness in order to catch his enemies off guard, it's no act. Rather, Yoda isn't using his Force abilities 24-7, but simply employing them when he needs to, most often in a combat situation. In the pre-Disney canon, Yoda used an ability called force Valor to overcome the realties of his accelerated age and perform the aforementioned acrobatic manoeuvres, and while that's technically not an official part of the newly established canon, the broad strokes of it most likely are. All in all, while some see Yoda's physical abilities as contradictory to how he's presented to us, that's not really the case at all. And with that in mind, that's everything for this list. Thank you so much folks for watching along, and thank you very much Jack Pooley to writing the article upon which this video is based. Make sure you check that out on whatculture.com. I've been Sean Ferry, you can 
can catch me on the various socials and don't forget to subscribe and follow at what culture star wars on the various channels as well you are awesome you are wonderful ah may the force be with you it never gets old saying it thanks very much